Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about Elixir. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, is there a benefit for a web developer to learn Elixir? Well, uh, the way that I look at any type of learning is usually, yes, everything is beneficial. If you're asking for job purposes, then mostly no. Uh, it's not that but it depends like I mean elixir isn't non-existent on the market but it is not a very adopted language if you look at the total like if we just look at the global market and I don't really see like elixir is my favorite language for one, well it's not my favorite language but it's my favorite language in a specific space for a very specific reason and that is the solution that uh, well, it's you. It's based on Erlang. It's based on, and the the you know. So you could argue that Erlang actually solved this problem a long time ago. But I mean, it's about Elixir. So what I like about Elixir, if we t if we talk about its contribution, is that all right, it made Erlang more accessible. It has a, because Erlang originally was developed here in. Uh, I'm not sure if it was here in Gothenburg or if it, because it's Ericsson, as far as I remember, who did it, and their one of their offices is here. So I'm not sure if it was here, but it somewhere in that company, anywho. And it was developed for the sole purpose, practically, to be an excellent language for the telecommunication, uh, telecommunication companies. And the one and most important thing that they care about is uptime. Who else cares about uptime? Well, everybody in web, practically, every single one of us. It, it, the days are gone when we could put up a really nice uh, construction worker sign and just have downtime and say, hey, our website will be up this date and that day. Uh, I wish we could be back in those days because it makes so many things so much easier, but uh, pff, nope, no, and not anymore. And so Erlang has been solving this problem for a long time. Problem with Erlang is that it wasn't really developed for mass consumption. It's not really a very nicely designed language, if you ask me at the very least. It's not bad, it's just not... It's like Objective-C. It wasn't really designed to be like super adopted, so we need to we tweak it and like we make some iterations. And that's what Elixir brings to the table. And I think that's great. The thing about it, which I absolutely love, is the idea that you can actually... Like, the, like having the idea of processes and having the idea where you can basically, I mean, you can literally debug code without having to pull down the system of descent. You can deploy new code without necessarily having to force your developer, force your stakeholder to upgrade their systems or anything like that. You can do all of that live, which is an enormous benefit for so many reasons. My most, the most interesting, interesting use case I've ever seen for Elixir was from an old video that I watched where they were doing embedded systems and the presentation this guy did was absolutely amazing. He just explained that, well, yeah, we when we have all these devices, well, it's really hard for us to debug a remote device. So if it's not working, how do we fix that? Well, what's cool about Elixir is that we can actually do that. We can actually get live information from the running like, and actually fix things live. We don't have to redeploy things. We don't have to uh, ask the user to send us like logs or anything like that. We can actually do all that stuff while everything is run is up and running. And I think that's super cool. And the the thing the the thing that I've noticed about Elixir is that from the few companies that I have dealt with that actually use it to great success. They have a few thi one specific thing in common. They're all gambling companies. Well, not all of them, but uh, I've seen, uh, I've been in discussions with, for a few jobs, and most of the time somebody talks to me about Elixir, it's a, ga a gambling company of some sort, or some company that is in that space, which I think is interesting, because the... Uh, because the way that I think about it, well, that makes a lot of sense. Because for a gambling a gambling company, they know, and this is the horror, this is the cynic in me talking, they know that the most important thing that they can do to make sure that people keep on staying on their sites and all that stuff is to make sure that the system never fails, ever, under any circumstances, because they're just basically taking money off of people who can't stop 
using their well of course there are other factors to it but you know that's the purpose of a slot machine if you can just keep the person at the slot machine you're gonna make money you just don't let them get any ideas or like break their concentration break their flow or anything like that and elixir is probably one of if not the best choice for that end goal the thing the thing though i see is that is a little bit sad about elixir if you ask me at the very least is that i feel like there is a very big f focus I uh, mean, Jose Valim is behind it, and as you probably know, he's he, he is a bit of a name in the Ruby community. And for some reason, I don't know why we got to that uh, that place, but it feels to me like there's so much emphasis that Elixir is for Ruby developers. It's uh, There's a lot of noise in the Ruby community about Elixir as being this ch alternative choice to Ruby, it's the, like the performance perspective and all this good stuff. Uh, I mean, but there are other initiatives in the Ruby community, such as NIM and so forth, that has the same... Like, I mean, Elixir isn't alone when it comes to fighting for the Ruby developers. But from my, from my perspective, Elixir is such a... It's, it's so useful to so many more companies out there. It shouldn't be something that's just for the Ruby developers, because it really isn't... I think it's much, much bo broader than that. But for some reason, I don't think that, that the, the Elixir has... I mean, if we look at the adoption rate, it hasn't broken through. It hasn't gotten to a point where it really is a common household name. I mean, Golang is seeing a lot more ex success. So, and kind of my guess as to why that might be is because Elixir is in many ways like Haskell. There isn't a lot of overlap in Elixir. There isn't really, like, I mean, you can solve the problem of uptime in other ways, and people are solving that problem all the time. So Elixir doesn't really have that strong, pun it doesn't have a strong incentive for people to switch over to it. One thing that really hurts is, as I said, was saying with Haskell, is that, sure, if you learn how to write code in Elixir, or you wrote write code in Haskell, it doesn't really matter, you will learn how to write a program. But there is practically no overlap with any other language on the market, which causes a lot of problems when it comes to hiring new people and educating people, because a lot of the, pe the people that you're going to try to find, well, they're going to have to learn the Elixir way of doing everything, and they're going to have to learn the, or Haskell, or whatever it is that you're using, right? And Although that I don't, I don't think that that should be a deal breaker. It is definitely something that will affect the uh, the prospects of the language. Because simply put, I have seen too many developers who have, like, uh, you know, every de there's. Unfortunately, not every developer is a super nerd. Like some people just don't want to go through the hassle of learn of feeling like they're a beginner again. And I can promise you, Elixir. If you've never done anything in Elixir, it's going to make you feel like a beginner. The pattern matching and case match, like the matching system, is uh, something that takes a while to get used to. Uh, it's not for everybody. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it's great, but uh, I can understand that. You mean if you're a die-hard Java or C# -sharp person or whatever, Elixir is going to feel very alien to you, and I think that that is hurting the languages uh, in many, uh, for, in a lot of cases. So what I want you to take away from this is that I think that Elixir has probably the most interesting uh, solution to the uptime problem. It is, uh, I think, amazing. I really do. The You should t t take a look at how the Beam deals with processes and sending messages between these processes. It's pretty, it's pretty damn cool. Uh, but unfortunately, for a web developer, this is practically a pointless language to learn. There's only a handful of companies that are really betting on it. And although I think that the use case for Elixir is so much broader, it simply isn't seeing the same adoption as some alternative languages out there, which I think is kind of sad. Uh, but at the same time, I understand it because Elixir is a very different experience to do development in as opposed to other like of the Java flavors or Smalltalk flavors or the C sharp flavors of languages. A lot of the mainstream languages have the same sort of syntax and same sort of structures and Elixir is vastly different from those. So it takes a lot of getting used to and that means that it's hard. It is a bit of a risk. It is a bit of a gamble to bet on Elixir if you're not doing something very specific. 
if you don't really need to bet on the benefits that Elixir is going to bring, you're probably not going to take that risk. And I think that's sad, because I think that Elixir can be so much more than it is. Have a great day.